let's talk about some of the things that you, you've been doing, especially when it comes to uh, the major solutions that you build. So from the things that you've been doing, for instance, from the spaces and the things that we have within um, your website, and I, I will ask the team to put all these images here. So you have, for instance, at the moment, uh, if I go to your platform, you have the Spaceverse and you have a lot of things where you can actually have already interactive experiences. And especially one of the things you've been doing is always pushing the boundaries between all these technologies and the use cases on fashion that we spoke so far. So from this perspective of the the fashion and uh, for instance, I have a daughter of 10 years old and she's always my reference model for this, is that she she's actually playing with her Roblox and she has her digital clothes, she has her fashion profile, she even has the games where she get as the fashion model. So in the end of the day, right now, there's almost two worlds that go in parallel. There's the world of, of the physical, my clothes and your clothes and so forth. And then there's the virtual part. And at the moment, there's a bridge, depends on your age, but everyone is already interacting with the digital twin, let's put it that way. So how do you see this when it comes to fashion? and other iterations because you you're doing a lot of different things because this because at the moment there's already a multi-billion dollars business of people just buying virtual goods and you mentioned mm -hmm. the nfts but i'm talking virtual goods of clothes that people buy for their avatars or people buy because they're doing some kind of promotions online so mm -hmm. do you see this going in a direction where these two worlds work together or are you going to have a divorce at a certain point where actually our digital twin becomes actually um and that is probably one of the visions of the metaverse becomes the becomes actually the biggest asset or one of the biggest assets. I want to just touch how do you visualize this? Because of course, everything is happening as we speak uh, and we cannot even talk in the future. This is happening now. Uh, but I want to touch this because a lot of people get very confused and I've been having the most crazy perceptions uh, when I speak with uh, even high profile personalities, even from music industry and so forth that, oh my God, no, no, I don't want this or then go completely in like us. But uh, I just would like to see how do you perceive this? It's a big question, but just some notes how do you've been seeing? Because I'm sure you have a lot of experience from people coming, not just the geeks, but I like to see the experience with the non-geeks. The geeks are with us. <laughs> the, the wearable market in the gaming space, that's already a billion dollar market and people seem to really enjoy. Actually, like I, I from, from the last data that I have from, from two months ago, I think 80% of the players today are changing their clothes at least five times per week. So that's that's a lot. So they are actually like they are getting bored of, of how they look and they actually like upgrade their stuff to perform better in the virtual environment. So I think it's it's a matter of like how you define the wearables in the virtual space and in the physical state. I'm a person that believes that um, virtual space needs support from the physical uh, world in order to just grow um, just like I was saying for the web3 like it has to be some kind of functionality or some some connection with the real world but of course I don't think that every everything that we have on the real world should have digital twins like that's not functional and that's not that's that, there is no reason to it. but um, I think the good thing is the brands and the individuals they're they're actually like super super curious to just explore how they will work so that's enough interest is 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 the point in my opinion like they don't have to fully just turn all the items into the i mean that's not efficient that's not for web3 it's not like technically supported from 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 the infrastructure perspective while on the other side to your question i think they will just keep coexisting um because the the the, the definition of the virtual wearables um that that is used by game, you know the, the that is f from a gamer perspective that is more about a wearable that's just an identity that just um helps them express themselves help, helps helps them to exist in the virtual space helps 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 them to identify each other or, or to, to, to to you know help them to to perform better in the in the virtual spaces or having just just like in the real world like having some kind of privilege to access you know stuff or just level up or, or you know the, the same thing so the more time that they're spending in the virtual space of course they will invest in that more because they don't really care about the real world stuff which is going to eventually like we will be wearing these stuff like more than more than like five years like you know like at max 
Um, and even that is too much. Um, so that that just loses the, the meaning in the real real life. It's just the same thing, and it's kind of like getting repetitive in the fashion world. So people are looking for some different, some more authentic things. And um, I mean, honestly, virtual space is giving them everything in that sense. So especially with the AI now, like they're able to create their own stuff and 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 just you know like from the not just the two D design but also the three D design, so they can create the wings and everything, like you know like the fire coming under, like all these things, which is super interesting. And if the VR and AR technology goes well together, like we will see them actually touching the real life in different ways. Um, I think people are just hungry for, for such stuff, like interesting, authentic stuff. Uh, so they will be chasing after that. I think of course, two worlds will coexist, but not in like fully 100% existing way, but they will have small connections um, because we still have, of course we do have young generations, but we also have, um, you know, people from the older generation that will need to adopt um, one way or another. I think they are starting to understand, um, but I don't think they're there yet. So they will need more use cases and more like solid things in their way. Um, because I do, I do see that they're also interested to, to explore the digital space, but um, they care about the functionality more because of the conditions that they were raised. Um, so it will take some time. So there is, I mean, if young generation wants to achieve things, if we want to develop projects that are touching on two worlds and touching on everyone, we need to think about, you know, if that's interesting for the young generation and if that's functional for the older generation for the real world. Um, we need to achieve both. Um, so yeah, that's a challenge that we need to work on. And as well on that part, there's as well the digital divide because you are, of course, uh super advanced at me here on this this kind of tools and and what you're doing but there's a huge challenge as well in perceive even if everyone has a mobile device that is partly doing that even the most basic smartphone is already doing a huge part of what we would speak here but most of people don't understand the layers and consequences mm -hmm.